In today's Learning Corner, we will be discussing heroes. What role do heroes play within the environment of KOA, as well as which heroes should you really be concentrating on as much as possible? Where do you want to go with your heroes? And if you don't have the best ones, what should you be doing next? Let's go have a look at our heroes. Hey guys, Pokemountain here bringing you another Learning Corner video. In today's video we're going to be discussing heroes and specifically what other than statistics do they bring to the game. How beneficial is it to have the latest heroes for example and if you can't get them or you don't have them, you don't spend money in the game or you're new to the game, what can you do to have the best possible heroes you can whilst not having the absolute latest. Um, let's go have a look, shall we? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come down here to the bottom. You're going to click on Heroes. And that is going to bring up a list of all the different heroes that you currently have available. And at the bottom, you will see in like a grayed out effect, the heroes that you don't quite yet have. So uh, what we're going to do to understand the heroes better is instead of going through every single hero that is available, I'm going to go into the Hero Council. And I'm going to show you from the Hero Council's point of view, which heroes you should be working on. And then we will be looking after that further into it individually to certain of the heroes, the ones that you kind of still need, even if you've got the latest and best heroes, which ones you need to help you with things such as, such as farming and that. All right. So let's go have a look. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom here to appoint heroes. And we're going to see our Hero Council. And starting off with the Master Enforcer level. The best hero you can have to put here is going to be the NS1 Lancelot hero. He's going to give you the best boost benefits that you can get, statistically speaking, in the game. But what if you don't have Lancelot? The second best option is going to be Uther. Now, Uther has become a lot easier to obtain in terms of he's no longer the rarest drop in your summoning circle. But he's still not the easiest to, to get your hands on. One that is a little bit easier than Uther, if you don't have Uther, is going to be King Arthur's Soul. And you can purchase King Arthur's Soul in certain Alliance stores. Depends on how far your kingdom is within the growth of its own kingdom. But you can get King Arthur's Souls from the Summoning Circle, or you can get it from your Alliance store if your Alliance is still in that position, that particular position. Beyond that, if you are still newer to the game than that, the next best thing you're going to be looking at is going to be Sir Bedivere. Sir Bedivere, the reason why I say him is simply because you get so many fragments for him every single day by doing your daily quests that it's going to be very easy to level him up to his full five stars very, very, very quickly. Especially in the beginning when you're starting off and you've got all those quests that you've got to do, you get a lot of his fragments as rewards and it's going to be quite simple to get him uh, all the way to five stars open up all his skills and then you can spend your experience your hero experience and skill points on him to level him up to maximum if you already have started on one of these other three heroes i wouldn't then concentrate on sir bedivere i would rather be pushing these three because they are definitely better but it is there in case you can't get one of the legendary two heroes or the NS1 hero. Moving on to the Master Herald. Master Herald top trump comes in as Evane the Bestower. But Evane the Bestower is very difficult to get fragments for. In the beginning, when you first start off, you have the option of doing a lot of quests and then redeeming those quest points for Evane. And I would definitely recommend doing that. Because what she can offer you is, is huge compared to what her counterparts can offer you, for example. But she's not necessarily the easiest person to get. Sometimes in VIP bundles, you can purchase a $1 bundle that has got 10 of her fragments, for example. That is a definite must-buy if you can, because you want to be able to get Evane 
and you want to open up all her skills and level her up because her skills are just insane. Look at this here. Troop training speed increased by 50%. Healing speed increased by 33%. Re research speed up by 20%. Trap construction speed, not that important unless traps get a an upgrade. Hopefully soon they do need one. They're desperately needing an upgrade. I would still recommend creating traps constantly. Because if they do get that upgrade, you don't have to now start creating traps. You'll have them. And she's going to help you with a 25% increase to your trap construction speed. Instant building speed up. That means when you're constructing a building or you're upgrading a building, you get to a certain point where it's got the button above it that says free. She's going to increase the amount of time that is free for you by an additional 1,250 seconds. And then construction speed increased by 20.9 seconds. Obviously, the higher you get her stars, the better these numbers will increase. I'm lucky enough to have her at four stars currently, but she can go all the way up to six, and then it just becomes even better and better. But failing that, let's say you can't get your hands on Evane the Bestower, then your next best option is going to be either more ghosts or Halals. Now, Morgos has got some some really good uh, skills here. Construction speed increase, trap construction speed increase, research speed increase, healing speed increase, troop training speed increase. And Halaz has got research speed increase, trap construction speed increase, healing speed increase, construction speed increase, and troop training speed increase. So whichever one of these two you can get, manage to get your hands on, I would say definitely do it if you do not have Evain the Bestower. They are going to help you out. Get them up there so that they can assist you and make your game a little bit easier for yourself. Beyond that, Sir Garrus, he's a blue hero, which means he's even easier to come by. Your, uh, your, your, your silver horns can get him quite easily for you. Um, you can build him up very, very easily, very, very quickly. He's a lower level to maximize out on. But because he's a blue hero, he doesn't offer you as much as the purple heroes, who don't offer you as much as the gold heroes. So if you do not have either of these, but you have a lot of Sir Geras fragments, for example, you could concentrate on him, get him leveled up, so that you can receive his skill benefits here. Green heroes, generally speaking, they don't even come into play anymore. There's no real green hero that's going to help you anywhere near as much as the blue, purple, and yellow heroes do. Right, moving on to the Master of War position. Master of War position, number one is Gorlo, simply because his statistics that he can offer you, his uh, boosts are higher than anybody else. If you cannot get your hands on Gorlo, he is now available on the Hero Summoning, the Gold Horn Summoning. So you should be able to get it a lot easier than you were before. But if you can't get him and you can't do the level ups that you need now, you then have the second best option, which is going to be Anguish, King Anguish himself. Really good statistics, and that's still really going to help you out if you can get him up there. Beyond him, Bors the Elder. Bors the Elder, a lot easier to obtain. Every time you do a Golem event, for example, you get 20 of the gold summoning fragments. You can use those to summon Bors the Elder. Um, he was pretty decent on the wall as well at one stage, not so much anymore. But he is there as a potential third place prize if you can't get yourself get your hands on the NS1 or the other legendary hero. Moving down the list, the only other one to really concern yourself with is Sir Lionel. Not so much for any of his skills uh, per se, but for his ability. So we will actually look at him again just now when we go into the abilities outside of the uh, Hero Council. Moving on to the High Steward. High Steward, your number one is Aurelius Pendragon, but Aurelius Pendragon is very difficult to get your hands on as well. The only way to get his fragments is by participating in the Ravager Hunt. That's where you, the Barbarian Rallies change into Ravager Rallies, and your rewards can be Aurelius Pendragon fragments. It's the only way to get his fragments, other than purchasing outright, uh, so it makes it very, very difficult to get. I've got him currently at one star. And I've only got three skills unlocked. I'm hoping that the Ravager camp should come back. It is back already in the beta version. So that hopefully means it's coming very, very, very soon to the regular version of KOA. 
But if you can, get your hands on Aurelius Pendragon. Do your Ravager camps every day. Get as many of his fragments as you can. He's going to astronomically increase your benefits in the game. Beyond him, if you don't if you don't have him or you can't get him, Ishulet the Fair is your second best option. And coming in close behind her is going to be Sir Balin. Now they both offer construction food re uh, requirements level, uh, construction food requirements reductions and that sort of thing. She being purple does offer an additional skill and then obviously Aurelius being gold, he offers an additional skill. And each one, once again, green is beaten by blue, blue is beaten by purple, purple is beaten by gold, generally speaking. That's a general rule of thumb. Um, there is an exception which I will show you just now. So if you can't get your hands on Aurelius Pendragon, concentrate on Ishulet the Fair. If you can't get Ishulet the Fair, or you've got a lot of Sir Balin fragments, for example, then work on Sir Balin. Get him up there so that he's going to assist you with getting the boosts that you require for your construction and research and things like that. Right, so moving on from there to Master of Strategy. Master of Strategy, I don't have him open at the moment. I only have 17 out of 20 fragments for Madoc, but Madoc is going to be your number one uh, pick for this slot. If you can get him, he is the NS3 hero, so he's a lot more difficult to get your hands on, especially as a free-to-play player or a minimal spend player. Beyond him, your second best option is going to be, now this is where the rule exception applies, Elaine of Galo. Elaine of Galo, once you've got her maximized out, and again, when you're a new player, every day you log into the game, you get the option to take to get more of her fragments and more of her fragments. You definitely, definitely want to have done that, or if you're about to start a farm account, you definitely want to do it, because her fragments are very difficult to come by as well, and she is going to give you better boosts, generally speaking, than even the legendary hero Oberon. If you can't get her or it's too late now, obviously then you're going to want to concentrate on Oberon. Again, you get 20 fragments after every Golem March and you can utilize those fragments for him to summon him and bring him in. The other hero to look at here is going to be Sir Gawain, a very important purple hero. Whether you've got the legendaries or not, whether you've got Madoc or not, you want to make sure you get Sir Gawain leveled up to the point where you can open up his fourth skill and maximize out on his fourth skill. His second skill is also going to come in handy potentially for you, so let's have a look quickly. His four skills are reinforcement capacity, can go up by 150,000, training capacity up by 300, that means every time you train troops, if he's appointed, you get to increase that number by 300, okay? Trap capacity, the amount of traps that your castle can hold. Again, at the moment, unless traps get a major upgrade, not that important. But if you've got the spare skills, put it in there and keep making your traps anyway, so that when they do get their upgrade, he's going to assist you in a big run as well. Um, march capacity, that's the big thing. That's the big, big, big skill you really need to be concentrating on with Sir Gawain. You want to be able to get him all the way to his maximum five stars, and then you want to max out on that fourth skill. It's going to increase your march capacity by 25,000. And now that march capacity increase is very, very big to the game. It means taking on a monster you couldn't normally take on. It means doing more damage when it comes to the golem monster. It means doing more damage to the portal monsters and things like that. It means if you're attacking another castle and you've got him equipped, you get to do more damage, kill more troops, take more resources things like that. So definitely a must-have is Sir Gawain. It is a number one draft pick in this game. That includes with the legendary heroes and that sort of thing. Gawain is definitely a number one pick that you need to be working on. Right, beyond that we go to High Constable. Your number one slot for High Constable is going to be Katagorn because once again his uh, boost that he offers your troops is very, very high. But he's the NS3 hero, so once again, like Madoc, he's very difficult to come by if you're a free-to-play player or a, a minimal spend player. So you're going to want to concentrate in the meantime on Morian. Now, Morian is a lot better than a lot of people give him credit for. 
He's got decent boosts, to be honest. I mean, 125% Bowman health, 125% infantry attack, and that sort of thing. I haven't even got him to maximum uh, six stars. Those are decent statistic boosts, especially if you can't get the NS3 heroes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Plus, his actual ability outside of the Hero Council is something that is really, really good. So we'll discuss that again shortly when we go outside the Hero Council. But bear in mind, Morin is very, very good. You definitely want to be working on him. Beyond him, if you're still low in the game or new to the game, you're going to find Tristan and your Tristan, and you're going to get a lot of his fragments, the same as before. And you're going to be able to get him up to five stars, get his maximum skills out and that sort of thing. So he's going to help you out in the early game. But beyond that, the hero that you're looking for most is going to be Sir Gareth. Sir Gareth is going to give you skills that increase things like silver production. That means the silver that is created inside your castle at, 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 at your silver mine. If you've got a, him appointed for in this particular case... His silver production increase is 30%. So I'm going to be able to be able to increase my silver production by 30% just by having him on. So when I log off for the evening, for example, I'll put him on so that by the time the next morning comes, I've got 30% more silver than I would have had had I not had him on. He also has... Uh, I, I concentrate more on production in this particular case because during the day when I'm in the game... I'm not concent I'm not really worried about production. I'm more worried about hunting monsters and things like that, in which case I would have switched out to Cadigan again. But after hours when the when my castle is busy producing for me and my guys are out there busy farming and that sort of thing, he's gonna be in because he gives me silver production, he's gonna eventually give me iron production and food production boosts. He also gives you iron, iron gathering speed and silver gathering speed. That means when you send troops out to go and collect iron or to collect silver, if you've got him appointed, they are going to get a boost as well. So once again, when you log off from the game, make sure he's in place if you're going to be sending out your troops to collect iron or silver. Beyond him is going to be Sir Pellis. If you don't have access to him or you don't have enough fragments of him, but you've got a lot of Sir Pellis fragments, he's also going to give you food production, iron production, food gathering, and iron gathering. He can come in handy if you do not have your have Sir, uh, uh, what's his name again? Sir Gareth available. He's going to come in handy. So, Beyond having the NST hero or the legendary hero, what you're really looking for is going to be Sir Gareth. And failing Sir Gareth, you're going to be looking for Sir Pelas. Right, moving on to the next one, Keeper of the Seal. Your NS2 hero, Dendrain, is going to be the best here. Once again, offering you the best boosts that you can get according to what's available in the game now. NS2 hero is a little bit more difficult to get a hold of than NS1, but easier to get a hold of than NS3. You can get her in certain line stores with the new update and that sort of thing. Depends on where your kingdom is in its progress. You'll be able to purchase her fragments, one every day from the line store, either her or Brutus. You'll be able to get them relatively cheaply during the shop events and that sort of thing. And I would definitely recommend if you are still low leveled on your NS3s or you haven't quite got your NS3s, but your NS2s are low as well, concentrate on your NS2s, even in the next shop event. If, if concentrating on the NS2s means that you're going to be able to maximize out their skills, or you're going to be able to open up more skills that you couldn't before, versus NS3 heroes getting a couple of fragments, not having enough to actually appoint them or anything like that, work on your NS2s. They're going to help you a lot better in the long run you will eventually get to ns3 heroes and when the ns4 heroes come out for when the next netherfall event happens the ns3 heroes will become a bit easier to obtain these ns2 heroes become even easier to obtain and then your ns1 heroes will probably fall in line with the likes of uh, uther and king anguish so dendrain is your number one if you can't get a hold of dendrain or you don't have enough fragments for her right now egrain the peerless is your next best bet She's also going to give you some decent statistics, like Morian does, for example. Um, her ability outside of the Hero Council is also very, very good, which we will discuss shortly. 
And once again, with the Golem Marches, you get the 20 Fragments, which you can use to spend on her as well. So that you can get her leveled up as quickly as you can and get her skills opened up. But failing the fact that you maybe don't have those that legendary hero, you don't have the NS2 hero, the next best bet that you're going to be looking for, unfortunately in this, is going to be Sir K. And he's not very good. He's not very good at all. So you definitely want to work on Igrain and then on Dindrain. Outside of that, what else can we look forward to? Elian the White. Elian the White has got an ability that gives you resource gathering speed. That means when your troops are out there actually collecting resources from a tile, he's going to increase the speed of that gathering by 18.6% in this particular case. I still need to level him up quite a bit. And again, this is going to help you. If you are going to be stepping away from the game during the day, for example, for a couple of hours, but you plan to come back, let's say, two or three hours later, appoint him, send your farmers out, have the other guys, the other purple heroes and that appointed so that you can maximize out on all those gathering and production speeds. When you come back into the game, you're going to have as many resources as you can get uh, possibly in the game by maximizing out on these heroes. After him, we're looking at uh, um, the Lady Ceres. Lady Ceres is the blue hero that does something similar to what Elian the White does. Troop upkeep is reduced. Resource production, meaning how, how, uh, how many resources are created inside your castle. Storage protection and resource gathering speed. So again, when your troops are out there gathering resources, she can increase the speed at which they gather it. Obviously not as good as Elian the White can, but if you don't have access to Elian the White, Lady Ceres is where you want to concentrate next. And then lastly, Master of Arms. Your first, first place prize is going to be Brutus, like Dendrain, also an NS2 hero, also has, these, uh, has some good statistic boosts that you can make use of. Um, he's outside of the Hero Council ability, like with um, uh, Morian, like with Igrain, like with Dindrain. is really, really good, and we'll discuss that when we go there now shortly. But he's your number one pick, failing him, Red Knight. Red Knight in certain uh, kingdoms, depending on your kingdom level, your alliance store will, be able, will allow you to purchase up to five fragments of his every day, and you'll be able to get him up there quite quickly as well. Not bad statistic boosts, not bad at all, but unfortunately not really the greatest either. Down the line, Sir Agravain will be next if you don't have access to the others. Not very good, you really want to be concentrating on the others. So just as a quick recap, Master Enforcer, NS1 is best, your legendary uh, heroes are second best in place here, or the free and easy to get uh, Sir Bedivere. Coming through to Master Herald, Evain the Bestower, but she's very difficult to get your hands on. If you don't have her, you can go with either Morgos or Halal's to get yourself those boosts as quickly and easy as possible. Master of War, NS1 Hero Go Low is your best bet, followed by Anguish, and then Bors the Elder. Other than that, you're going to be looking at Sir Lionel. Not the greatest, but it is still there. High Stuart. Aurelis Pendragon, very difficult to get your hands on. Failing him, you're going to be looking at Ishil at the Fair or Sir Balin. Then we look at Master Strategy. Madoc is your best bet. Failing Madoc, you're looking at Elaine or Oberon, depending on how high you've managed to get them leveled up. Then there's Sir Gawain is a must-have in this game. An absolute must-have. High Constable, Cadogan is your best bet, followed by Morian. Then don't forget your free and easy to obtain Tristan if you can't get the others. Going to help you out as well. Not as much, but it's going to help you out. And then the two resource heroes or the two boost heroes that you're going to use outside of combat is going to be Sir Gareth or Sir Palus. Sir Gareth does better than Sir Palus, uh, than Sir Palus does um, and relatively easy to obtain nowadays anyway. Keeper of the Seal, number one is your NS2 hero, Dendrain. Following that is going to be Igrain the Peerless. And then the main resource people that you're going to want here is going to be Elian the White or Lady Cirrus. And then lastly, Master of Arms, Brutus from the NS2 heroes is your number one pick. Beyond him is going to be Red Knight. Those are the two you want to concentrate on there. 
Right, so that's going to be the Hero Council and how you want to really appoint your Hero Council. Now what we're going to do is we're going to quickly run through the heroes and I'm going to pick out certain heroes that have got outside benefits to your game. Number one being at the top, Lancelot. Lancelot has the ability, cavalry led by Lancelot, charge the enemy, dealing 140%. At full maximum, meaning six stars, he's going to offer you 250%. This value will increase to 250%. So they're dealing 140% of their base damage. Base damage means unmodified damage. So before all your boosts, it's going to deal 140% of your base damage to troop types in a march adjacent to the one that your troops attack. So if he's marching, for example, and you've got warriors, remember the order of combat when the warriors attack, when they attack, he's going to boost, he, he's going to provide his damage benefit to the ones adjacent. So it won't be warriors against warriors, for example. His ability will go warriors to spearmen, for example. So he's going to give you an extra boost of damage, which is actually not bad. It's not the greatest in the march, but it's not bad. So he might be sitting in, for example, third or fourth slot when you're doing your march sendouts. Evane the Bestower, she's got an ability for when you're farming. Evane the Bestower re releases her power of blessing, increasing the resource gathering speed of troops in a march led by her by 41%. At full six stars, she's going to offer you 60% speed boost. Now, if you've got her, you'll have noticed that you send out, for example, five marches, all to level eight uh, farms, for example, and one will come back hours before the other. That's because she's in there. It is a huge, huge increase to what your gathering speed actually is. Um, Gorlo has an ability, which is actually very, very nice. The other NS1 hero. Cavalry led by Gorlo will have a 20% chance to attack the enemy cavalry and bowmen directly. So the cavalry normally attack infantry. He is going to give you a 20% chance that the cavalry is going to rather go straight to the bowmen or the other cavalry, which is the, the unit that's actually doing the most damage to you. So when you're in an attack, you want to kill off his bowmen especially because that's where most of his damage is coming from. And if he allows you to attack them directly, your cavalry attack them directly, you can kill off more bowmen quicker, which means you're going to take less damage. That maximizes out to 3,400%. So let's just read that again. Cavalry led by Golo will have a 20% chance to attack the enemy cavalry and bowmen directly, dealing a, in my case, 2,968% times their base damage, again, unmodified base damage, to the enemy, while at the same time ignoring enemy defense. So a very, very good ability. Um, Aurelius is also nice for farming. He says here, Increase, increases the resource carrying capacity of troops in a march led by Aurelius Pendragon. So if he's in a march, they, your troops can actually carry a lot more. In my particular case, 32% more than they would have before. Beyond him, we're looking at Catagon. Catagon has an ability, the health of infantry led by Catagon, which is your wall. So when somebody attacks you, the first thing they're going to hit generally is your infantry. So it's going to increase the health of your infantry up to a maximum of 1,000%. Um, if your dragon is accompanying your troops, your infantry will increase their defense by a maximum of 450%. So you get additional boosts there over what you had before. So he's going to help your wall of infantry become an even bigger, more colossal wall for your opponent to have to get past. Really, really good. Um, Dendrain, a really good ability as well. Bowman led by Dendrain will be bestowed with her devotion, granting Bowman an extra strike, so an extra attack of light, dealing a maximum of 2,500% of their base damage, again, unmodified damage, and reducing their target's defense by up to 1,050% within three attacks. The defense reduction buff can't be stacked. So it doesn't stack on top of another debuff. It, whichever one's better or stronger will apply. So once again, a really good ability. Your bowmen are getting extra attack off. Uh, and the bowmen do the most damage already. So she's going to allow your bowmen to do the most damage with an extra attack. Really, really fantastic. Brutus NS2 hero goes very well with Dendrain. Bowmen led by Brutus have a 20% chance to receive Undying Glory. 
increasing their attack when attacking by up to 8,000%. So increasing their attack by 8,000%. And again, your bowmen are the ones doing the most damage. And striking the infantry first. The Undying Glory buff only lasts for one attack and, count, and can't be stacked. So it's only one attack of the extra damage. In my case, 3,666 extra attack. In my case, 3,666% increase. Maximizes out to 8,000%. So 20% chance of 1 in 5 it's going to happen. But when it happens, it's going to make a huge difference to your attack uh, or your damage value at the end of the day. Right, let's go back into here. Now we're going to look at the others. Oberon, he's got a ability that says increased cavalry attack by 94% or 120 at max. And Bowman attack by 120% max for troops led by Oberon. Not the greatest if you compare him to the other ones that we've already seen. So if you have got access to those, you definitely want those. But if you can't get them, Oberon is actually not too bad to have. Red Knight troops led by the Red Knight will deal damage equal to 66% of the remaining number of your troops. So if you've got 10,000 troops remaining, for example, it will be 66% of 10,000. If you've got a million troops, it will be 66% of a million. Okay. So in high, high, high marches, he has the potential to do a lot of damage. But in those high marches, you can also do a lot more damage with Brutus and Dendrain and Lancelot, Golo, and even King Anguish and Uther and that sort of thing. So is he that good? Not really, but he's a nice draft pick if you don't have access to the other heroes. Okay, next one we're going to be looking at Igraine. Now, Igraine and Morian go together. They both have a similar ability that says cavalry led by Igraine, or Bowman in the case of Morian, Cavalry led by Igraine, the peerless, gain a up to 6% chance to attack twice. Morian's says, Bowman led by Morian, son of a glaive, have a up to 6% chance of attacking twice. So if you're running the both of them together, you have a 6% chance that either one of them is going to have the cavalry attack twice or the Bowman attack twice. Not bad at all, especially if you've got many, many tiers like a rainbow uh, march where you've got a lot of different tiers of bowmen and a lot, or a lot of tier, different tiers of cavalry. They can potentially do a lot more damage than you actually anticipate them to do. So not bad. Again, you have other heroes that generally do better. Um but if you don't have access to those heroes, these two are really, really good heroes to maximize out on if you can. King Arthur, unfortunately not that great, so we're going to just move on past him straight away because you should by now be able to be getting Uther or concentrating on Uther, for example, or getting Lancelot and that sort of thing. So Uther has a really good skill and a very, 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 very good ability. And I'm going to try and explain it nicely to you now. Increase the attack of all troops led by Uther up to 200% maximum. So that's simple. Increase the attack. All troops. Cavalry, bowmen, infantry, siege. Whenever you kill one type of troop, meaning tier 9 bowmen, for example, that's one type. Uh, tier 8 bowmen, that's one type. Tier 2 bowmen, that's one type. Whenever you kill one type of troop, you'll also deal 3.18 up to a maximum of 5% of the amount of damage that killed them to all other enemy troops. So let's say, for example, he's worth Brutus. Brutus gives you that 8,000 extra attack on your bowmen, and they kill off a whole bunch of infantry. They kill off a whole couple of tiers of infantry, for example. Every time they kill one of those levels, Uther himself is going to deal up to 5% uh, of that damage that they dealt to all the other surviving troops in the opponent's force. That is going to add up very, very quickly. If your opponent has got a rainbow nation of troops in his castle and you attack him, you want to attack with Uther. If your opponent is in a tower with a critical defense, for example, you don't want to attack with Uther because at maximum he's going to deal that, a damage to f that amount of damage to five different types, then four types, three types, two types, and one type. Whereas in a Rainbow Nation, he can do it for 
all nine tiers of infantry, all nine tiers of cavalry, all, all, all 13, sorry, 13 tiers of infantry, cavalry, bowmen, and siege. So he can do a crazy amount of damage. Bear in mind, if your opponent has got a rainbow of tiers and troops, Uther is what you want to attack with above everybody else. Uh, King Anguish. King Anguish actually has a nice ability as well. Well, part of his ability is very, very nice. Increased troop health by 44%. So there's troops across the board. And troop defense by 45%, both of which maximize at 80%. So that's actually not bad at all. For troops led by King Anguish, the troop type with the most troops will gain a shield that lasts three rounds. So if you've got majority infantry, which odds are you have if you are defending, or, or you've got majority bowmen, odds are you have if you are majority attacking, this shield is going to go either to the infantry or the bowmen. The shield's health is equal to maximum of 10% of the troop's total health. So your total health of all your troops 10% of that, that is how much the shield is actually worth. During battle, the shield will take damage first. So it hits the shield and it does all that damage before it kills a single one of your troops or wounds a single one of your troops. So he can be really, really good. Where does he fit in the best? For me, he fits in the best on the wall. When I do a march, for example, I've got 270,000 troops going out there. I've got 70,000 cow as bowmen, 70,000 infantry, for example. So he's going to give that shield to either bowmen or infantry, but he's giving that shield to 70,000 troops. But if I've got him on my wall and I've got 1.5 million troops, and let's say, for example, 600,000 of them are infantry, uh, he's going to give that shield to 600,000 troops. The amount of shield that they're going to have is going to be extremely, extremely high. So I make sure, if I can, that I have a high number of infantry because they're the ones who go first. I make sure, if I can, I've got a high number of infantry inside my castle and then he's on the wall because my wall, my defensive wall that people are going to hit first is going to have this huge jump in boosts if my dragon is home and i've got for example category uh, on the wall his ability is going to give me my troops an increase to their health and because the dragon's home is going to give them an increase to their defense which means that between him and anguish i'm going to have an increase to their health i'm going to have an increase to their defense and i'm going to have this huge shield that my opponent has to try and get through first before he even kills one of my troops and in that time all my bowmen in the background are going to be shooting at him and hopefully do enough damage that it hurts my opponent for having have attacked me in the first place. So King Anguish, also very, very good ability outside of battle. All right, so then we're going to move on now to, okay, Alien the White, a good farming ability, increases the food gathering speed of troops in a march led by him. So again, the speed at which they gather the resources is going to be increased by up to 60%. Similar to Elaine. Uh, Elaine of Gorlo. Not not really anything outside of battle to, to concern yourself too much with. Morgos increases the wood gathering speed of troops in a march. Very, very nice. Sir Lionel. Sir Lionel has a, an ability outside of the Hero Council that actually does come in handy. You might not have even noticed it happening. You'll be sending a march, for example, against a monster or against a barbarian rally. And he's there automatically. You just send them off. But what you don't realize is that you're you getting a, an additional, you're potentially getting an additional XP increase to what you were getting before. He's got ability that says when troops in a march led by Sir Lionel attack monsters, there is a, in my case, 35%, maximum 70% chance you will receive double guard XP and skill XP. Now, what that means is if you come down to your reports, and you look at monsters and that that you have fought already, for example. So let's go here. We go. We defeated a monster. Here my Lord XP is 10,228 for a level 36 Frost Giant. 10,228. Here it's 10,128 for the same level monster. How could that be? That is because of that hero's ability. So his ability is triggering without me even noticing it necessarily. Unless you've looked and noticed, hang on a second, my Lord XP does increase sometimes. 
that's because of Sir Lionel going out there with that march. So he's going to help you with your Lord XP, which means that up here at the top, this blue bar is going to fill up quicker. And the quicker it fills up, the more talent points you get. The more talent points you get, the more you can design your castle or your Lord to be catered towards uh, farming in the case of a farm account or war or a balance of both, etc. So he's going to come in handy when hunting monsters and things like that. Beyond those, there are a couple of heroes that do offer you certain benefits when marching, like with farming and that sort of thing. But uh, we've basically covered the majority of the ones that are important and that you really need to concentrate on. So let's have a look. From the normal legendary ones, all the legendaries are important in one way or another. Some better than others. Your lower ones that you don't not really going to concentrate too much on in, in, in reality is probably going to be King Arthur's Soul uh, and the Red Knight. Then beyond that, you're going to be looking at Bors the Elder, Igraine, uh, Morian, and Oberon. Beyond that, you're looking at Uther and King Anguish. Beyond those, you're looking at the NS2 heroes and NS3, NS1, NS2, and NS3 heroes. On top of all of that, and I'm not sure where this slides in in terms of where you want to concentrate, is going to be Evain and Aurelis. But that's because their fragments are extremely difficult to come by. In terms of the purple heroes, your number one draft pick is going to be Sir Gawain. You want to level him up to level 35. You want to open up his fourth skill. You want to maximize that skill. Maybe skill number two to give you more troops when you create troops and that sort of thing. Maybe skill one to increase your rally capacity. But he's your number one purple draft pick. Beyond him, we are looking at Elian the White, Elaine of Gorlo, Morgos, Sir Lionel, Ishilat the Fair, Sir Gareth, uh, um, and that's about the ones that I would personally, and Halawas, that's about the ones that I would personally concentrate on the most. Uh, in terms of the blue heroes, it's only really Lady Ceres, Sir Pelis, or Sir Balin that I would be looking at if I didn't have access to the others. In the green, nobody of real commiserate value because you can get better from the other levels. So I'm not really too worried about that. There is one other thing to bear in mind when it comes to heroes. If we go back to the hero council, that's this bottom corner here, Covenant. If you click on Covenant, you will see that there is a selection of heroes that allow you to have certain benefits. If you click the question mark, it will tell you what the specifics are. In this case, you need three heroes. Level 1 will be appointed at, all of them must be 1 star level, level 2 will be all 3 star, and level 3 all 5 star, okay? So if we look here, here is level 1, level 2, level 3 for example, but you want to have 3 of these heroes if you want to get these benefits. Same thing applies for the next one, sword and shield, but in this case let's have a look, okay, it's also 3 heroes. You want three of these heroes in order to get these benefits. Now, in this case, three of these heroes is very easy. There's Morian, there's a Red Knight, and there's Igraine. Three very easy heroes to get your holds on, get, that, get your hands on in terms of the legendary heroes. Otherwise, you have got some other options that you can try and get your hands on to. Here, you're looking at some relatively easy ones, two easy ones, Oberon and Bors the Elder. Otherwise, failing that, Elaine and King Uther, for, uh, King Arthur's Soul, for example. But if you appoint these, as it describes here, three heroes, if you appoint them on the Hero Council, you will get these benefits according to what star level they are. Your NS2 heroes, the two combined, provide their own benefit. Monarch Strike is going to be either King Anguish or Gorlo. On the one side, Lancelot or King Uther on the other side. If you can appoint either one, either two of these in any of those combinations, you will have these benefits. United Round Table is going to be Tristan, which is very, very easy to get, and Lord Key. You can get these two on your Hero Council and you'll get these benefits. And then lastly, your NS3 Heroes Champion of the Dragon. If you can appoint these two heroes, you'll get these benefits. Now, 
Until the NS3 heroes came out, you could only ever have two covenants because too many of these heroes in here take up the same slots. You could have this slot here and this slot here giving you your one covenant. Then you could have your three heroes, which would be in this slot here, this slot here, and this slot here, giving you your second covenant. Or your two NS heroes taking up these two slots here. If you got your NS2 heroes, you can now no longer put the three heroes here. The red knight falls away because of Dendrain. So you've got these two open here. If you've got your NS3 heroes, they go into this slot over here. Currently, there is no slot activity for this one here and this one here. But I expect that to change personally with the NS4 heroes when they eventually come out. So I expect those to go into that slot there. But currently, majority of the players who don't have, uh, who don't have access easily to NS3 heroes have only got two covenants. Those covenants, again, are these abilities provided by having the correct heroes on the council. So they would have their Monarch Strike giving them one covenant, and they would have either the NS2 heroes giving them their second covenant, or, <clears throat> excuse me, they would have the other three legendaries to give them the Sword and Shield covenant. Now with the NS3 heroes here, you can, if you've got NS2 heroes in place, put in these guys and get a third Covenant and the big ability here is army damage received reduction by 30% the amount of damage your army receives will be down by 30% now again Let's picture somebody attacking you You got Katagon on the wall. Okay, and you've got King Anguish on the wall. Okay Katagon, let's get back to his Ability quickly the here the health of infantry led by Katagon will be in my case 280% increased and if my dragon is with my troops, their defense will increase by 126%. That's because I've only got him at one star at the moment, and his level is only level 28. That will increase as time goes by. But I'm going to get those boosts onto my wall as well. And I've got, say, King Anguish on my wall. Uh, there we go. And he's going to give me the additional troop health and the additional troop defense, as well as the shield to my biggest number of troops. Now got those two together on the wall, which means my opponent has to get through my, all my stat boosts like normal, my additional boosts from King Anguish, my additional boosts by Katagun, my additional shield by King Anguish, and if I've got those NS3 heroes appointed, that means I'm also going to be getting their covenant, which is going to give me a reduction to the amount of damage received by 30%. So, it's a lot for my opponent to have to get through. Okay, so that's Covenants in a nutshell. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope you learned something here today. I hope this helped you in one way or another, or showed you what you can do in terms of if you don't have the latest heroes, where to go and how to concentrate from there. Um, the only thing else that I can really explain to you now is going to be which heroes to use in a march. And then is going to be a very open-ended question. If we go down here to marches or to troops and that sort of thing, you'll see of my first march, for example, I've got here infantry, cavalry, bowmen, infantry, cavalry, bowmen. That's it. Just six, the top six tiers sort of thing. Going for a form of critical march that I'm busy testing with. In this particular case, I got a lot of bowmen. And I need to make sure that I can get through to my opponent damage as much as possible. So I'm trying out Brutus and Gorlo, but I would probably go Brutus and Dendrain, for example. Uh, if I don't have access to them, I would go with Igraine and Morian, because they're going to allow the extra damages through. Or if my opponent has got a rainbow of troops in his castle, and I'm attacking his castle, or a tower, or Camelot, or something like that, where there's a lot of different types of troops in there, I'm going to want to go in with Uther uh, uh, and somebody else, whether it be Uther and Lancelot, Uther, Gorlo, Uther, Dendrain, Uther, Brutus, Uther, Cadogan, whatever the case might be. I definitely want to have Uther in the front of that march as well. Um, otherwise, you're going to utilize basically the heroes exactly as we have described it today, where they fit in. Um, heroes that go in the correct types of marches. We've already explained that. 
So you just got to think for yourself now, where do I sit? Do I have more cavalry? Do I have high boosted cavalry statistics over everything else? In which case, okay, I'm going to go with Gorlo because of his ability to let my cavalry potentially attack the uh, bowmen directly, for example. That's going to be great for me. Lancelot has got a great cavalry ability. Um, Igraine's got a great cavalry ability. So I'm going to work around the fact that my cavalry can do the most damage. So I'm going to build a march centering around a big number of cavalry, a big number of bowmen, and a smaller number of infantry, for example. Or big cavalry, big infantry, smaller bowmen, because I'm concentrating on making my cavalry do the maximum damage I can, because that's where my statistics lie. If my statistics lie with infantry, for example, I'm going to build a wall of infantry and make sure that I've got Maddox and Cadogan in front for, so that they can both give me the infantry boosts and I can sit with the bowmen behind and just shoot everything. And it's going to take my opponent so long to get through my infantry that my bowmen are going to do a ton of damage in the background. Um, so it depends on your situation. It depends on your statistics. If any of that applies to you, only you can tell. Right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you learned anything new, please drop a comment down below. Hit the like button. Uh, if you enjoy these sorts of videos, please hit the subscribe and bell notification icon so that you will be alerted every time we do a new Learning Corner video or a breaking news video or even if we're just sharing our Never Netherfall events and things like that. Otherwise, guys, until the next video, be good, be well, and be safe. Bye.